Oh, it's Luke from Divine Star, and I'm just going over briefly 1.2, Alpha 1.2. Now that it's officially out, I've been telling people to wait till Alpha 1.2 to actually use the engine uh, because I was instituting a lot of breaking changes from Alpha 1.1 and even the pre release that I did for this. But I just want to briefly go over what's special about Alpha 1.2, go over some of the breaking changes, and what's I plan for the future of the engine and all that. So. The biggest thing to see what Alpha 1.2 about is just in this test world. So you probably have all seen this is just the stairs that have been added in all the different stair states. And one thing I didn't talk too much about is that uh, there's different animation states for Flora voxels. So the leaves here are animated differently in the vertex shader than the grass and the vines. Of course there's also added overlay textures and all that. So yeah, and if you look here you can see that all the faces for the uh, stairs are being culled properly. That was one of the biggest things that was holding up this update was just going through all that. Uh, the stair code is uh, Almost 3,000 lines of code just for the stairs themselves to get working. I will be working on optimizing all that stuff for the future a bit, but it's going to take a while. I want to just kind of shift my focus from the rendering stuff a bit and clean up some of the stuff on the back end and get it ready for the server use next. Another thing about this update was, of course, the invention of rich data. So all these voxels hold different data, and I made a video about this. So whatever. Actually, I don't think I should probably not do that because <laughs> that's going to break it. So I go back to that. It's now that. It's obviously different than that. So the way that works is just. Uh, hash mapping the data to a specific chunk in a separate thread. So there's a whole example world just for this that you can check out if you want to use that in your own projects. Um, all of this stuff with the entities and item stuff, that's, I'm going to be worrying uh, adding that later officially to the engine. It is still possible, but I need to figure out a more efficient way to get that all in. And I am working on that. Just because the... Uh, the JSON objects are pretty huge, and to sync that between all threads, especially if you have a bunch of them, would be very uh, memory intensive. But I know that if I just uh, put everything in a flat array and then build a special type of builder that interacts directly with the Shape Builder API that I made, it would save a lot of memory. So, yeah. Other than that, uh, not too much has changed, at least on the surface of things. But looking at the code now, the one of the biggest breaking changes was how you register textures or you get textures for building a voxel. And if you don't know, uh, voxel, how you get a voxel in the engine, you basically have to have two things. The first thing being uh, the actual data. So this is the data for the voxel, its name, its ID, its shape ID, the substance that it is. Uh, material, this is something I'll, I'll be working on adding later. That's be kind of important for uh, sound design purposes and maybe PBR rendering in the future. Hardness, uh, just in case if you want Breakable voxels, this would be an important factor. And this is is rich, so if it's a rich voxel, so if it's a voxel that can store data, so anytime a rich voxel is placed using the appropriate functions, it will be added to the rich data thread automatically, so you don't have to worry about that. And physics, uh, physics is something still I'm working on. It's mostly I just need to figure out the most efficient way to work with different colliders but basically you just specify the collider here 
and if you whether or not to check collisions. If you turn this to false, you don't really have to set this, just leave it as an empty string. But this is the first part of voxels. And the second part is the constructor object. So this gets registered in the constructor thread, which handles the actual building of all chunk meshes. And what this does is basically anytime in the chunk processor it encounters the specific vo voxel, it grabs this object and runs this function. So, I mean, this should make pretty much sense. Like, if the space is exposed, do this and all of that. I just realized that this should be this. But what has changed now is that you can no longer call this function in this because uh, after the texture map has been set, it is released. So you have to cache the textures that you want to use for the voxel. And it's really not that hard. You can store it in an array. You can store it as just uh, some variables that I do up here. Reason being is that the texture map can get pretty huge and we don't really want to leave that data around in all the threads so if you have like a six core processor with 12 threads and you have 12 workers running then you have to sync that between all 12 threads so that creates just a lot of uh, extra memory usage that we don't need so it used to be that you had to have the actual voxel data attached to this object but you no longer need to do that anymore you just need to supply the ID of the voxel also so that makes things a bit simpler so the the types of things have changed dramatically and I'm going to be spending maybe like another week or two just updating the wiki to let everyone know all the different things that have changed and all that it's definitely the things that got simpler at least on the surface of things, but there's a lot of more obfuscation or obfuscation. <laughs> I really can say that word, but you know what I mean. It's just a lot more complexity underneath uh, handling things for you now. Um, but yeah, the people have asked me what is the best way to learn how to use a voxel engine, and it's just really to download the repo go into the Electron folder, install the node packages so you can run the Electron app here, and then just look at the actual test world here and look at what's going on. Probably some of the most simplest ones is um, like Ocean World. You know, it's basically just I have some just util functions that I import, but basically I just set up a normal Babylon scene, have it render, and knit the voxel engine here, and make sure you supply the workers, which are the threads. So the simplest setup that you need is just a world worker and constructor workers. And the world worker, we just generate the world. So it's a very simple triple for loop because it's a 3D dimensional space. And we just get the chunk X and Z and then build it out for the chunk width, depth, and height. But uh, so it's basically just like, hey, if it's below the certain. Certain threshold, just paint this voxel. And it must be above this one, paint this voxel. You just gotta make sure that you have all the voxels registered for each thread. And after you generate, you just call dv, dv, dw build chunk and all that. You can also, to make things easier, you can do. Uh, Build roll column.
but I will let you discover all of that um, for yourself. So this is the official release notes for the Voxel engine, just for Alpha 1.2. You can see here just a list of things that I started. They're not necessarily done yet, but are pretty awesome that I will be expanding on in the future and making more efficient and cleaning up all the bugs. But there's some things that change with the voxel shapes, uh, which is, a voxel shape is just something that describes the actual mesh of each voxel. So most voxel shapes are just boxes, so that's the voxel shape is just a box. But now you have uh, special override functions, uh, so you can override like a face, override the AO, and override uh, face flipping for AO. Which uh, faces for meshes generally flip for smooth lighting and all that. And I also I fixed a few more bugs with lighting, light updates, and all that stuff. So generally, just in a week or two, check out the wiki. All the all that stuff will be updated. So generally, my plan next is to start Alpha 1.3. And Alpha 1.3, I'm going to be focusing on. Uh, getting the engine working uh, headlessly on a node server. And this is going to require some different data changes in terms of how chunks are stored and how world columns are stored. Basically, a world column is just a se uh, section of chunks. If, if you've really gotten into how Minecraft stores data, it stores things in uh, world sections and each chunk is actually 16 by 16 by 16. So that's basically how the engine does it also. Just because it's way more efficient to build a 16 by 16 16 chunk than one that's by 16 16 by 256. So basically what I'm going to have to do is uh, condense all chunk data into a single array buffer that can be easily transferred to a WebSocket. And figure out the best way to uh, set up easy communication between the client and the server and vice versa. And I'm going to be working on a better multi-threaded world generation. Because the biggest thing with running on the server is you don't have to generate mesh data you just have to send the client uh, the chunk data and on the client side it can build the meshes because it would be pretty it would be a lot of data to send through a WebSocket the mesh data which can be you know exponentially larger than a chunk so that's what I'm going to optimize it for the main reason I'm doing that is because I've had several people say that they want to use the engine, but they want to use it primarily for uh, multiplayer. So I'm going to try to set it up to do that as easily as possible. I've already added some things in place to check to see if the server is running on a node instance instead of in the browser. So the groundwork for that has been set. There just needs to be some optimization, optimizations and all of that. And another thing I will be doing in Alpha 1.3 is making sure that uh, water flow and removal is working as best as possible. I mean, generally, it works, but I need to get it working with uh, RGB light and sunlight. So it needs to uh, run light updates when it flows or it gets removed. So that's going to be a little bit more complicated, but it's definitely doable. After I get that worked out, I can actually get uh, magma working like I want it to. And uh, another thing I will have to fix is these uh, diagonal textures. In case the light causes it, causes it to flip, I have to account for that because the face will be flipped and the texture will be all messed up so there's just a lot more testing and all that but generally 
that's it. That's all I have to say. Um, I generally don't like to talk in these videos because I just want to keep the focus on the engine and the stuff that I'm working on. And not on me what I'm doing, but this is just you know, big update, uh, big update, big thing going on. It's, it's been pretty sweet. I really appreciate all the support everyone's been giving me. Uh, Discord's thriving pretty well. Got a lot of people on there asking questions. We have pretty interesting discussions and all that. So that's pretty sweet. Um, last thing I want to say is, uh, so uh, I am making this Vox engine free for everyone. It's uh, you can make any game with you want with it. It's under the uh, MIT license. It's all made in TypeScript and JavaScript. Uh, in the future, I am working on my own game with it. That will be a pay-for game and all of that. But uh, there's already been videos of my progress and all of that. So my main focus uh, ultimately is to make the engine uh, curtailed to my purposes as much as possible. But I'm willing to bend it a bit uh, for other people's needs and all that. As long as it doesn't blow the engine or just make it... Uh, totally different towards my vision for it and ultimately my vision is not a minecraft clone i'm not really interested in making a minecraft clone i told people that my main vision is a uh, just 3d pixel art games or like 3d super nintendo games that's my main idea uh, that i'm interested in uh you know of course it's obviously influenced by minecraft uh, i think minecraft is a pretty awesome thing in itself just the technical feed and all that but ultimately i do not want to make any game like minecraft or anything like that that is not my end goal or my interest uh but uh you know if you want to take the engine and make your own minecraft clone you can do that uh just just whatever so anyway uh thank you for watching take it easy and uh just look out for future updates